All right, hello everybody. It's the City Medhaven here today, and with me I got Deathstroke. Um, there's two plays that I want to go over. Earlier today, I had a match in Lakeville, and I was telling Deathstroke how this match should be played. And then we had a match later on. That's how it's going to be played. So let's go over the first match. We're just going to kind of speed through the first one, go over a couple of examples. Bad plays compared to good plays. I want to start doing um, VOD reviews over on Twitch and maybe uh, on YouTube as well. Uh, my goal is for a shift in content to kind of go more of a coaching fashion than reviews or anything else. I got to turn on the game for myself because it's a little bit loud. So... Let's go ahead. We're going to disconnect our camera here. We're going to go skip ahead a tad bit, jumping into a little bit more of a, uh, a range situation here. So a lot of the times on Lakeville, you're going to see a lot of plays come up top. You're going to see a lot of people want to play in this top section, fight over this area. Um, but unfortunately, the enemy team, they're always going to have an advantage. Remember, it comes down to this backside here because they get sniper control and then they can get snipers placed down there. Along with that, once they take the top section, they're kind of forced to play in this tighter edge once they hit here but they always have that background support but same can be said about both sides but usually the southern part of the map these guys play it well on average all the time um pretty much this side's a lot easier to get coordinated on than you are on the northern part as you can see all of our force is focused here when it should be focused um one about here secondary there td in the background one more guy working the hill section and then maybe two guys working up in the front here and that's kind of the estimation that you should be looking at whenever you're thinking about lakeville um whenever you're playing on this map so let's jump back in and let it continue uh, i gotta double check two things there we go uh, we're gonna go ahead and skip ahead a little bit more as you can see, it's just a giant pile up right here. And because of this pile up, we're already losing a couple of tanks. As you can see, we've already uh, gone down three tanks in the top section here. Still playing it. Skip ahead, skip ahead. And now we're going to pause. We're going to head back. Back section here. This is um, something that happens a lot. A lot of people absolutely enjoy taking over this section here and then getting caught out by the push up here and then everything else that kind of comes up in the back section up in this back section and then you can get snipers snipers then you have your main push that's always focused here how they're trying to just pull in they can easily put pressure on cap here and these guys have to over pull to be able to get shots out but once you pull out to here these guys all have shots on this position so the one thing that's always best is to have a guy situated right here to where he can pull out he can high explosive somebody or not and to maintain side like maintain this section because he can easily back off back in the cover right here so he can just pull and then repeat each time just going back and forth inside that section while this team it's a lot easier for them to come in and push so the way to handle this once these guys are situated here it's real easy to pull in and assault whoever is placed inside this location so you always want to make sure that you have one guy sitting back here and i mean this is in public matchmaking as well this doesn't matter if it's you know public or comp but having a guy back here he's now able to pull and his line of sight allows him to specifically focus out targets within this line of view these guys that are trying to pull to put pressure here can't pull because this guy is able to get shots right there. Um, this match is a loss. Uh, this one kind of went by a little bit fast, so I'm not really going to go over a whole lot inside this one. I'll just go ahead and fast forward it a tad bit. I'm over here. I make a mistake. We get pushed out a lot. This entire section gets hit hard. And double barrels also have no audio inside this game mode. So uh, Plus their barrels never move. But as you can see, you're going to see it just lines up exactly like was said because there's no pressure being applied. And this back section falls apart really fast. And these guys get pulled in here in the reversal. It gets hit hard. Next match, though, that I want to show off is absolutely amazing. All right. Second replay. Let's go ahead and skip up a tad bit. Inside this replay, we were already getting situated. I was chatting with Deathstroke. So there's me. Is that me? That is me. Uh, Deathstroke, you were further up here. Then we had the back section here. Okay. 
go ahead and get this map up real fast. Disconnect the sides over here. It's 14 to 15 right now. We're going to go ahead and skip. Actually, hold on. Let's go ahead and pause. Open map. From map point of view, I want to show this off. Situated. Situated. Yeah, as you can see, this is already lined up in a way that has this entire northern section put together. And then in the rear here, it's always going to be the same no matter what. You always have TDs that are sniping. You always have your aggressive heavy. You always have the medium tanks coming in. And you always have the background snipers on the southern part of Lakeville. This is how it always goes. Uh, city, I kind of just let city do what city does. And my goal is to defend and play within this zone the entire time. Because if you can set this up correctly, this is around a 70% win rate the entire time if you can maintain this. Um, sacrificing the outskirt right here and letting enemies gain control of mid, uh, maintain reserve hit points, and just have perfect execution of this back section. This back section is absolutely ridiculous. All right, let's go ahead and just hit play again, and then we're going to skip a little bit, bring it up a tad. Now, Iron Arnies, they're good tanks, but man, do they struggle whenever it comes on the weak spots and how long they've been in the game. You know, that, that's a tier 8 I really wanted, but instead it's tier 10. Um, as you can see, things are starting to deteriorate on the top section. So we're going to go ahead and skip a little bit more. It's 12 to 15 right now. Skip a little bit more. It is 10 to 15 now. And things are not looking super good. We're going to do another little bit of a 30 second skip here. It is 9 to 15 right now. And a lot of people, like you would already sit here and think to yourself, oh, this is already over. This, this match is done. So one thing about this is that um, I want to pause this real quick right here. This is probably an amazing play, and this is something you barely ever see. We have an IS-7 that is playing up top. We have Deathstroke and his Iron Arnie. We have me inside my Iron Arnie. From this view, I'm able to get shots into everything that peaks right here. This IS-7 is able to peek over and throw shells downrange a little bit farther maybe catching out the hatches of this or catching out the hatch of that. And then Deathstroke basically has the same view lines that I do inside the center point, which prevents these guys from being able to come over and putting pressure on the IS-7. So they physically can't come up unless they want to get punished by coming up in this top section. Then on top of that, we also have a little bit of assistance inside the back right here. I don't believe we have assistance in the back right here just yet. I think it left. Yeah, he relocated uh, going further up the center in action X and he pulled up. So we're left with our uh, little three man team over here against one, two, three, four, five tanks on this side of the map. So we're going to go ahead and play as you can see. IS-7 easy plays right here. Just throwing it down range the haul down Deathstroke taking down the uh, Skoda coming up. I put a shell into the VZ. The IS-7 puts a shell into the VZ. I do believe at this point I do get snapped. Nope, that was snapped was a while ago. Another shell going into the VZ. E4 getting hit by me, getting hit by Deathstroke. And this pull right here, it just completely stops this entire advance. Even though we are completely outnumbered, M60 coming up as well, we're still able to hold just because we have superior p positioning and we have to, enemies are forced to essentially come up in this top section. Now, here in the back, what's really nice about this is how these guys are already lined up. You know, your main position is always going to take an absolute beating. These guys are going to be bleeding a lot of hit points a lot of the time. The person that is back here that's going to be playing this back position, he's going to be reserved. He's going to have his hit points to rely on. Then you have your tank that is playing the peaking position. And he also knocked down this tree right here, which is really good to see. Uh, Panzer IV up in the top section here. And then if we move over a tad bit, you already see that the enemies are starting to advance. As you can tell, you had the snipers inside the back section. There's four of them back here. So we got the heavy, another heavy, medium, medium, two mediums coming in from city. Downside here, the Orthus. And then I do believe that is an E4 coming up as well. But the thing is, these guys are useless right now. None of these guys can do anything because they have to pull up before they're capable of doing any damage just yet. So let's go ahead and hit play. Let this play out a tad bit more. We're going to skip ahead 30 seconds. 
We're going to skip ahead another 30 seconds. And right here, let's go ahead and go back 30. I skipped a little bit too far. I should have uh, time stamped this a little bit. Be able to get this play out. The E4 coming up. Uh, once we see that we have enough health that has bled off these enemies, it is now time for us to full send it in. Because we don't want to be here too long. We want to take this down. So the VZ, the E4, we're going to try and double tap the King Tiger. Up next is going to be VZ or the E4. It doesn't matter which one. There goes the VZ. And immediately after, there goes the E4. Now, once this is all done, you know, don't think that it's over just yet. Because the one thing is, sure, you now have, you feel like you have control of this section. But do you actually have control of the section? You always want to have somebody stay behind, kind of scouting this area where he can see outward and make sure that you guys don't get hit by a heavy push on the flank. And then everyone else is going to then come back, relocate, and try to assist inside this section. If you are fighting from checkpoint and you're falling back to quarry, this is the exact line you take, and this is now the position that you hold up on uh, C2, and that's where you're going to want to come inside. Because now you're going to be uh, providing assistance for these guys, and if these guys go down, it is now your job to pull in and hold this right behind them or with them at the exact same time. Skip ahead 30 seconds. As we can see, the Conway went down. Easy shots here. And this, honestly, for public matchmaking, was uh, probably one of the better experiences I've seen on this map. Uh, we're just sitting here throwing out shells and just hammering everything off in the distance because now they're stuck and they have to pull in to do anything. So, as you can see, E4 is e it's easy for the enemy team to put pressure on this side. And then coming over, the Death Star, this is a lot of pressure from the Death Star on this side where it's, he can come out and he can splash whatever he needs to. As you guys can see, there's already a lot of dead tanks right there. Uh, that This has been happening the entire time play up a little bit and by this point it is six to five we have superior positioning right now the leopard is also still up over here leopard and the grill 15 there goes the e4 and now it's essentially just clean up for the rest of the match yeah no that's um for lakeville that that's got to be one of the uh Best public matches I've seen in Lakeville. Anyways, everybody, I hope you learned a couple of things going over that. I do want to kind of do a little bit of a content shift and head more into um, strategies and coaching plays because one-sided matchmaking and everything else, um, as Clone Guy has mentioned and Slap has mentioned, it's, it's not really uh, the matchmaking is rigged against you. It is skill-based. So my goal is going to shift into trying to assist you in having map knowledge and learning positioning and ways to handle it. Anyways, thank you for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, seriously, leave a comment. Let me know if you guys like this ty uh, style of content. And also let me know what you think about this uh, little uh, drawing tool that I got. I didn't realize it existed for over four years and I finally got it. Anyways, see you in the next one.